Tasha, you're familiar with to a degree. Um, we're just in a, in a real area right now uh, where there are some real strongholds. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some real strongholds. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was talking to God. Uh, before I talked to God most of the time, Deacon is black, I tried to talk to my wife. And um, I was talking to God, um, but I talked to First Lady first, and I said, I need God to give me the wisdom how to break through some of these traditional barriers that I'm seeing in the spirit. Uh, how do we um, bust through uh, this barricade that is the establishment of the area. Uh, how do we find our way to borrow mm. through uh, this seeming impasse uh, that says, um, hmm, those that came with you is good, but how do we get those that were already here? And I said, well, God, I, I need you to help. I'm not going to change my approach. I'm not going to change my, my style. I'm not going to change my flavor uh, because that would be compromising, and I just can't do that. Um, but I said, God, i got to believe that there are people in this region that actually want the sincere milk of the word of God. Yes, sir. That's good. And he said, son, there are. Yes, sir. And uh, he said, I just got to teach you and show you how to do it. And I said, well, God, I, I guess that's what I got to live with. Okay, I'll just <laughs> let you teach me and show me. And uh, so I was praying. I talked to First Lady, and uh, Sister Akasha, she tried to give me the spiritual answer. Amen. Sometimes you want the real, you want the spiritual answer, but thank God for the spiritual answer. First Lady got deep <laughs> with me, amen, and says, you know, well, you just continue to feed the people, Pastor, and uh, they're going to come. Yeah. Uh, okay, First Lady, that's good. Uh, give me something else, though. You know, that's, <laughs> that's, that's cool. That's, that's exciting. That's real. Man. Give me a little something else. She, she really didn't have it. So uh, I talked to the Lord about it. And um, the Lord said this to me very clearly. And when I heard him say it, I said, well, God, I guess that's what I got to teach. I was praying. And this phrase came out in my prayer. And the phrase was, what happens when you've been planted too deep? Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. So it kind of shocked me a little bit because uh, I, I've heard the Lord speak to me. You know, uh, I'm pretty comfortable with him sharing with me. It, it normally doesn't throw me off like that. Uh, but this one kind of shook me a little bit. What happens when you've been planted too deep? And I said, well, uh, I don't know. Um, so I guess I got to do some homework. And so... Um, I was telling first lady, I said, uh, I, I got to really kind of like put myself in seclusion for a little bit because I don't even understand like what this is. And um, so I began to try to do some research. And so we're going to attempt to teach tonight on the, the thought that you wrote down was great, but this is actually the title. Uh, the title is actually The Dangers of Being Planted Too Deep. The Dangers of Being Planted Too Deep. Minister Black, you're going to like this. Uh, yes, sir. you like this kind of stuff. If nobody else does, hmm. I, I know Minister Black likes this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. There's a word, hmm. dendrology. Hmm. Dendrology. D-E-N-D-R-O-L-O-G-Y. Yes, -E -E dendrology. <laughs> dendrology is the study, the science, or the practice of wooded plants. Dendrology, the study, the art, and the practice of wooded plants. So in order for me to grasp hold to what it is I'm supposed to share tonight, it was necessary for me to be able to identify with the activity and the nature of a tree. <laughs> and so I began to look up... Um, different arborist websites. Uh, I began to try to dig uh, different horticultural things, uh, 
that would speak to the nature of a tree and plants so that I can begin to get understanding about what God is saying about the roots. Mm. And so when I began to look up dendrology, and it spoke of how whenever something is planted, in order for it to be sustained, it has to be planted at the right level, in the right environment, and at the right time. Mm -hmm. So in order for life in a plant, a tree, or anything to be sustained, it has to be planted at the right level, mm -hmm. in the right environment, and at the right time. Mm -hmm. The interesting part about the life cycle of a tree is that even though I may have planted a tree at the right place, in the right environment, at the right level, the interesting thing is all of those factors can change after I've been planted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I was planted, it may have been 70 degrees. Mm -hmm. So the environment and the culture that I was planted in was right for my roots to extend to the place they were supposed to and grow. But in four months, if I wasn't tended to properly, mm -hmm. and the environment shift on, mm -hmm. shifted on me, even though I was done the right way in the beginning, because nobody tended to me in that next season, mm -hmm. the potential for my life mm -hmm. has been short. Wow. And so what I found is that when plants or trees are put in the ground, the idea behind the root system is that the roots are supposed to go out, mm -hmm. not go down. Mm -hmm. Because when the roots go down, when roots are deep, mm -hmm. they do more damage to the plant or the tree than they do good. Mm -hmm. Why? I, I thank you for asking me. <laughs> it, it, it does more damage because when a plant or tree begins to root too deep, mm -hmm. it gets away from its water source. If the roots are below water level and they have not stretched out how they were supposed to, all of the nutrients I'm supposed to get from the water, all of the oxygen I'm supposed to see, receive from the topsoil, my roots went too far too fast that I wasn't able to sustain life at the level I was in. Wow. And because my roots went deep, it means that even if I die, my tree won't fall. Mm -hmm. All right? Uh, I'm, I'm going to introduce some scripture to you. I just got to paint this picture. Mm -hmm. Even if I die, Sister Lipscomb, mm -hmm. I'll still be standing wow. as a dead tree. Dead tree. Mm -hmm. That's I'll it. actually be called or considered a snag. Oh. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. a word. A snag. Yeah. Yeah. Dendrology. I've been yes, in okay. class. Thank you. Yeah. I've been in class. <laughs> a snag is the word in dendrology for a dead tree. Mm -hmm. Don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but I feel good where I am, so I'm going to stay here. Uh, dead trees actually serve no purpose to the earth. <laughs> the only thing a dead tree <laughs> does is attract, the word I used earlier, Come on. <laughs> burrowing insects. Yes, sir. They attract woodpeckers. Mm -hmm. They attract nuisances mm. because the tree has no life. But even though the tree is dead, mm -hmm. it still stands. Mm -hmm. Research says, digging is black, that a dead tree has, it specifically is an oak tree, a dead oak tree has the ability to stand for 80 years. Wow. A dead, dead oak tree, oak tree wow. can still stand for 80 years. <laughs> I'm going to get all kind of in trouble. <laughs> um, and because the tree is still standing, mm -hmm. the owner says, uh -huh. I ain't going to cut it down. Mm -hmm. Even though all it's doing is attracting termites, mm -hmm. burrowing insects, yes, and woodpeckers, <laughs> I'm still not going to chop it down. Because that's still my tree. All right. Um, let's, 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 let's get into it. Um, this is the exciting part. Even though 
trees that are planted too deep have cut off their lifespan. There is a measure of time, and this thing will make sense before I'm done tonight. There is a measure of time that a tree whose roots have been planted too deep can still be uprooted and replanted that the tree can live. Mm. But it has to happen within the first five years of there becoming a noticeable death to the tree. Mm -hmm. All right? So within the first five years, I've got to begin to notice if my tree has roots that are too deep. Help me, Pastor, I will. In dendrology, we find that the first sign is that there would be a measure of... Uh, uh, chlor, 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 is, I'm going to spell it C-H-R-O-L-O-S-I-S Y'all tell me what that is C-H-R-O-L-O-S-I-S Chrolosis Chrolosis There will begin to be a measure of chrolosis mm -hmm. Which is in layman's terms A yellowing of the leaves There it is So uh, in this first five years uh, I should be able to note and to see that the leaves on my tree are not green. And since my leaves aren't green, and I'm seeing yellowing on my leaves, this is a telltale sign that my tree has been planted too deep. If the chlorosis doesn't show up, the next thing I see is that there will be a browning of the leaves. Mm -hmm. The browning states that I waited a little bit too long to deal with my problem, but there's still life because at least the leaf is still connected. Mm. 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 But after I've gotten beyond my time frame and chlorosis has already come and gone, browning has come and gone, and now leaves have stopped forming, I've just got to a place that I waited too long to be replanted. Mm. Now, why is Pastor Hinton talking about a tree tonight in Bible study? Well, the Lord showed me that we, Diabiatum, as the body of Christ, mm -hmm. are likened unto trees. Mm. That if, when he comes to our life, our tree and he does not see green leaves there is a measure of deadness in our lives that has to be addressed while it's still time while it's time ah. Minister Black I begin to uh, talk to the Lord and he said son a lot of these churches have gone for so long without seeing any fruit on their tree. But because I haven't cut the tree down, and because I haven't allowed there to be a great fall, they believe there's still hope. Wow. He said, but the reality of it is, the season that we're in now, is that God is getting ready to do some cutting down. This, this is this is heavy. This needs to be on TV. Uh, mm. he, he's getting ready to do some chopping off mm. because they've gone too long in a dead state without even attempting to change their ways. Wow. No we pray. Oh, mm. God help me here. So I get excited. When I see, she came in right on time. When I see somebody <laughs> like a Cheryl Baltner. Yes, yes. go ahead. Like a Tim Foster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, like a Natasha Lipscomb. Yes. Uh, that would say, Pastor, I'm willing to try yeah. to be replanted. Mm -hmm. God help me mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. uh, so that life yeah, life can still be produced yes. from my tree. Wow. Yes. Because if I stay in the same place Come on, talk to me. where deadness, mm -hmm. woodpeckers, yeah. insects, Bravery. and burrowing yes, objects Come on, are, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to find myself dying yeah. with the tree. Yeah. Wow. Amen. 
<sighs> and when God gets to cutting the tree down, mm -hmm. he's not identifying who's a part of it. Uh -oh. He just slicing the whole tree. Oh, that's tree. heavy. They just got heavy. Oh. Yeah, that's heavy, sir. Mm -hmm. <sighs> let's, let, let's go. Let's, let, let, me, let me give you some scripture before I, before I, before I lose my mind. No, Luke, Luke 13. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying tonight, Sister Kasha. And I, I asked the Lord, I said, let it be. Just to preach this uh, on a Sunday. He said, no, you got to teach this tonight. So I said, well, I'm going to teach it tonight. Uh, but, but God, I, I want to preach so bad. Okay, now, Luke 18. Luke, Luke 13. Luke 13. Luke 13. Y'all yeah, all over the place. Yeah, help me. Help me to pray. You back. Uh, Luke 13. Mm -hmm. Ah, trying to give us an understanding tonight. Sister Andrology. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, oh, Andrology. What's going on for you? Uh, mm -hmm. Sister, Sister Balkan, we're teaching tonight on the dangers of being planted too deep. Oh, wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, you, came, you came on the right night. Uh, the <laughs> dangers of being planted too deep. All right, Luke, Luke chapter 13. I'm going to just read four verses out of it, starting at verse number 6. Uh, Luke chapter 13. Verse number six, I'm going to read six through nine. Luke chapter 13, verses six through nine. The verse of the Lord says this, and uh, he spake also this parable. Yes, sir. <laughs> a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then said he unto the dresser or the tender of his vineyard, Behold, these three years. Now, I told you in dendrology, you got five years with you still having the opportunity to live. Mm -hmm. All right. These three years, uh, I come seeking fruit on this tree and find none. Cut it down. <laughs> Why cumbereth it the ground? It's wasting my time. And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also. I told you, Dondrology gives me five years. Okay. Yes. Uh, let it alone this year also till I shall dig about it and dung it. Mm -hmm. And if it bear fruit, well or good. And if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. Mm -hmm. you, you, you can consider this teaching prophetic tonight if you want to. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, I know I'm reading in God's vein. Uh, he says, I've come for three years looking for production out of what's been planted. Mm. And every year I come with an expectation. I let you have your New Year's Eve service. You know, you get to talking about this is the year of uh, breakthrough. Mm -hmm. This is the year of increase. This is the year of overflow. And God says, I came every year. I never saw breakthrough. I never saw increase. I never saw overflow. And now I'm tired. Mm -hmm. And because I'm tired, I'm at a point in my, in my mind, this is God, that says, I'm through with you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd rather cut you down because you're wasting space in my kingdom. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get rid of you so that I can take what was supposed to be for you and give it to somebody that's bearing fruit. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, 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 the tiller of the ground, he, he's the pastor of the church, mm -hmm. and, and he says, uh, uh, Jesus, listen, uh, don't, don't come cut us off just yet. Mm -hmm. uh, give me one more year. And, and this year, I'm going to stop preaching about money. Mm -hmm. uh, but this year, I'm going to actually preach the word. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, uh, I'm going to stop cheating on my wife. God help me. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'm going to actually do what's right. Uh, this, this year, year. God, I, I, I'm going to make a change. Mm -hmm. uh, give me right. an opportunity mm -hmm. to dress this thing up before you expose me for who I am to all the people. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, well, check it out. I'll do this. I'll give you an opportunity. Mm -hmm. One more year. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and after this, if I don't see what I'm looking for when I come to your church, uh, you can expect your church to fall. Wow. Oh, God help me here. Mm. Natasha, I'm trying to help all of us. Uh, when, when we have gotten so progressive and so about things and doing stuff that we stop seeing fruit, mm -hmm. we've got to really check out our motive behind operating. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it's more than just we come to church on Wednesday, we come to church on Sunday, but if you can't identify fruit in your life yeah. by the connection, Jesus. maybe you shouldn't be connected. Mm. Yeah. That's good. Bruh. Mm. I get excited, and I, I ain't going to put nobody <laughs> on blast at all. Uh, I'm, I'm going to just say this. It is all of it's true and all of it's real, and, uh, but it happens in the church where I get text messages from the members. 
and, and they'll say, Pastor, I've seen such an increase in my life mm -hmm. since we've been connected to your ministry. Uh, I've seen such a change mm -hmm. in my family mm -hmm. since we've been connected to your ministry. So all that does, Deacon mm -hmm. is Black, is encourages me yeah, that apparently yes, what sir. we're doing is right. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. To God be the glory. So if God would allow us, check this out, to do it the right way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he tells us tonight that there are those that are doing it the wrong way. Yes, sir. Ha. Huh. What I've got to do, what we've got to do, is keep doing it the right way. Yes, sir. So that we can expand for those that want to be replanted. Wow. Amen. Mm. First thing, when I know my roots have run too deep, mm -hmm. is, and you can make, make a note of this, we see visible deterioration. Visible deterioration. Remember I told you uh, about uh, chlorosis and how it is that is the yellowing of the leaves. All right? I can see this thing clearly that even though Diaviana, the tree, is supposed to give off green leaves, the leaves have begun to yellow. When I see that, I'm supposed to address this deficiency at that time. Mm -hmm. what, what, what I mean by that? Okay, this is what I mean. When I address a deficiency, it means this. I accept the fact that where I am is no longer where I should be. Mm -hmm. let, me, let, let me help us. Let me, let me, let me talk to, and I, I can do this safe tonight by God's grace. Uh, but just because... When God planted Grandma's church back in 1920, yeah. mm -hmm. and in 1920, like I told you, mm -hmm. the environment was right, yeah. the soil was right, mm -hmm. and the time was right. right. But now in 2016, mm -hmm. 1920s ways yeah. aren't still the right environment for my church. Right. So, so if I'm still saying holiness is that you got to wear the white thick stockings, but you can still smoke cigarettes, I'm missing mm, the gap between Good how point. you're Good viewing point. holiness. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Good point. I, I'm, I'm wearing the white dolly, yeah. but I'm still sleeping with the deacons. Mm. Wow. Yeah. With the door on. With the door on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, I wish I was in the marriage conference because yeah. I would have went real deep right there. Oh, God. No, Jesus, help me remember that when we get some adults in the room. All right. Uh, so, 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 where? No, I need, I need to remember it. I need to remember it because it's a powerful point. Um, but, but when it was set up, it was the right time. Yes. That's how we it was the right season. It was the right environment. The norm. Mm. But just because grandma and them put a stained glass window uh -huh. in the church, that doesn't mean that I'm supposed to die just to continue to let the name on the window live in the church. Uh -huh. mm. Yes, sir. Well, I can't leave this church because, you know, my grandma paid for that pew. Give him $100 and keep moving. Mm. Because I can't afford to die. When I've noticeably seen a difference in my life, that's what I'm trying to get us around. Jesus. When I see my deterioration, mm -hmm. I see that there was a time I couldn't stay out of church. Now it's a time that I ain't trying to go to church. Mm. So being that I see the shift, yeah, the that shift. is my sign yeah, there it is. that what I'm planted in yes. no longer is living. Yes, sir. Mm. Mm. Jesus is alert. Mm. But my pastor can still preach, can he? What is he preaching about? Right. Is he just exciting? Is he a, is he a great orator that he just he catches your attention by his words? But really, let's didact what he's saying. Where's the word? Yeah. Where are you taking me in the scripture right. to back up the point that your pastor's a great preacher? Yes, yeah, sir. Show me in the book. I'm gonna give y'all something. Deacon's black. No one really said. But I'm gonna give y'all something. My mama told me when I was a little boy. Mama told me that she said whenever you go to church. And the preacher don't come out of the Bible. He don't open the Bible. He didn't preach. Mm. Mm. <laughs> he might have read one preacher. But he comes up because he's charismatic. Now, if he got the word in his heart, that's great. But if I can't hear or see the reference yeah. of the scripture, yes. yeah. you have not preached. 
You may have gave me a great story. Mm -hmm. You may have told me some good points. Mm -hmm. You may have had some proverbial right. truths that you learned in seminary some that morals. you gave me. Yes, some sir. good moral stories. You, you may have smiled at me a lot and talked about grace. But if you have not given me what thus saith the Lord, yeah. sir, yeah. you really haven't preached. Yeah, right. But because there's 20,000 people in the church. Mm -hmm. oh. right. So there's, there's a visible <laughs> deterioration. Amen. The visible deterioration that you see from the Christian standpoint is that, this is key, please write this down. The visible deterioration is the lack or absence of fruit. The lack or absence of fruit. Now, we, we, we taught in first principles uh, probably a month and a half ago about the fruit of the Spirit out of Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. All right. The interesting part for those that weren't there, let me just give you this. Uh, the interesting part is uh, that word uh, that, that you all, we, we taught you, you learned this. I want this to stay etched in your mind. That word is not plural. It is singular, mm -hmm. uh, which means there is one fruit with nine characteristics. All right. So I can't say that God, uh, I don't have the ability to love. If I'm saved, because that's part of the fruit package. Mm -hmm. That's good, sir. Right. Let me break it down again for those that may have forgot or weren't there. Okay, an apple. Okay, an apple, uh, it is an apple, but there are layers and components that make up the apple. Mm -hmm. uh, the stem is not the apple. Mm -hmm. The skin is not the apple. Uh, the seed is not the apple. The core is not the apple. The, I guess you would call it the meat of mm -hmm. it, is not the apple. But those five different things make up the apple. Mm -hmm. The same thing with the fruit of the Spirit. Love is not the fruit of the Spirit. Joy is not the fruit of the Spirit. But those nine characteristics, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, faith, gentleness, meekness, temperance, those nine things compose the fruit. So when I don't see those nine things operating in your life, or if you're not working towards growing in the area of those nine things in your life, that is deterioration in your spirit. Wow. So that means either you're not being fed appropriately or your roots are too deep where you are. Mm. When my roots are too deep, I grow blind to what I don't see. I said that right. I, I didn't say it wrong. I didn't say it wrong. I'm going to say it again. I grow blind to what I don't see. Pastor, give me understanding. Okay, I will. Uh, when my roots are so deep that I can't even see when it's right in my face that the pastor always flirt with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, problem. Yeah. Because my roots are so deep, I'm ignoring all of the signs that this man is after me. Mm -hmm. So now your husband, because he's spiritual and he see it, he tell you, I don't want you talking to him, man, up there. Now you, because your roots are so deep, well, it's just pastor. Yeah. Forget it's just pastor. Your husband say he saw something, then he's trying to let you know you're blind to what you're not seeing. I'm seeing it, and because I see it, we out of here. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, help me today, Jesus. I, yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying to stay on, <laughs> on point and on track uh, today. So when the lack of fruit shows in a continual measure, that is a sign. That either I'm not being fed yeah. or my roots are too deep. Now, let's, 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 let's go this way. The scripture says, uh, before it was a time when uh, the Lord was getting ready to give uh, the Ten Commandments, and he was talking to Moses, and even when he was talking to Abraham, he says, you know, uh, I'm going to visit the iniquity of the fathers mm -hmm. to the third and the fourth generation. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, that's heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, he says... I will visit the iniquity of the father to the third and fourth generation. What does that mean? That means that whatever my dad, granddad, great granddad, great great granddad had in their lives that were janky, mm -hmm. that generational curse.